Upfront 2017 is well underway, and we've got a lot of headlines about trust and accountability issues. Not an old subject, to be sure. Uh, what has changed from a year ago? I think what's changed from a year ago is two things. One is that the pendulum that's been swinging back to premium video is accelerating in the direction that the premium video companies want, so that's a good thing. Um, we've been talking about this topic with our, with our client base for a while, and whether it was uh, three years ago when things like ad fraud got exposed within you know, ad networks and others, and brand marketers started to pull dollars back and move it into inherently safer environments. Um, that has now evolved into a, a deeper understanding of the, the depth of challenge of ensuring that brand safety is maintained. And with that, a uh, deeper appreciation and understanding that um, brand marketers and agencies putting their dollars in uh, environments where the quality of the content is high, i.e. with programmers and others, and the viewing is taking place in environments that are highly engaging, um, that that delivers better outcomes for brand marketers. So A, the, the pendulum swinging back, and B, I think the level of education across the industry as to the size of the potential problem um, and the sophistication of the problem is more mature, and I think that's good for the, the premium video ecosystem. There's an understanding that there is shared responsibility across all players in the, the, the media value chain. So whether that's brand marketers holding um, their agencies accountable, um, or whether that's agencies holding the, in some cases, the tech vendors that they use accountable, um, or whether that's publishers doing the same for their, their respective parties. I think that um, the, the largest brand marketers in the world um, and the largest agencies understand that there is not only a shared responsibility but a shared benefit to ensuring that the outcomes that they're collectively looking for are achieved by addressing the issue. Um, and I think the, 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 there is a tighter partnership that's going to continue to, to evolve between the largest publishers, premium publishers in the world, and the brands and agencies who understand um, that putting dollars back into um, safer environments, you see how many examples there are of dollars moving back into television out of channels that are arguably more questionable, that's gonna be a good thing because it's gonna deliver better brand metrics. So do you think we reached a tipping point with these latest examples that caused the headlines, you think? Uh, I, I wouldn't, wouldn't claim to have the crystal ball of what's not been you know, uncovered. But I, but I think actually, as I said, the pendulum is swinging back. That said, I think there's still work to be done to be able to correctly uh, articulate the, the true value um, and therefore the, the, you know, the associated movement of dollars into, premium, into kind of premium environments because um, the answer is a complicated one in that it's a combination of, of not just putting... Um, uh, your dollars into brand safe environments. Um, but also, how do you still do that while enabling the buy side to be able to leverage um, uh, different types of buying execution, whether that be through programmatic channels, whether that be brand marketers leveraging first party, uh, their, their own first party data to buy, audience, um, buy audiences across um, publishers and across all screens. Um, those are, those are trade-offs that have to get made. So you can balance the brand and the agency being able to achieve their objective, the publisher being able to ach achieve their goals, and then most importantly at the center, delivering the consumer the, the best in class kind of ad experience. When Nielsen comes out with total content ratings, whether it's this summer or whenever, how big a deal will that be in the general scheme of things? That's, is that a silver bullet or something short? It's not a silver bullet, in, in my opinion, but it's important. I mean, Nielsen um, clearly has the, the leadership position based on uh, Nielsen being the, the, the currency of choice in linear, and therefore anything that Nielsen does to help to extend uh, that currency measurement across other screens is an important development for sure. 
it, it, it's not, in our opinion, a silver bullet. And, and the reason for that is the way that inventory will be bought and sold in the future will be, uh, will, will be different than it is today. And um, what I mean by that is more and more inventory is going to be sold against audience. Um, and that audience may be against proprietary first party data sets of a brand marketer. And therefore, there isn't necessarily the need in that instance to have different types of measurement because it's against a brand marketer's list is one example. Um, secondarily, um, there may be other types of, um, of, of audience-based uh, selling uh, where validation doesn't necessarily have to come from, uh, come from a single currency provider. So I think it's really interesting if you look at the leadership that the um, programmers have been taking, uh, whether it be NBC Universal uh, making a, a billion dollars of its inventory available to be transacted against um, data sets uh, that don't require uh, a Nielsen currency, uh, or it be the Open AP initiative with Fox, Turner, and Viacom, where they're looking to um, um, make linear inventory available against, again, audience segments that get aligned across those groups. I think those are really important signals that the premium uh, video uh, ecosystem understands that it needs to move towards uh, a model that gives greater options to the buy side in terms of how that inventory is bought. Uh, does that mean that everything goes audience? No, I, I don't believe that's true, but it's going to be a richer mosaic of options. And that means that the technology providers that have to support the planning, the forecasting, the execution, the stewardship, the reporting and the billing uh, against those campaigns have to be able to support uh, any type of uh, data set um, for those purposes and any type of currency because we believe it will be a rich mosaic of different currencies based on um, how that inventory is going to be bought and sold. Let's talk about addressable advertising for a moment. What do you see as the bright spots there? Well, uh, beyond what I just referenced, um, I think that the the bright spot is that the the sell side is taking leadership of thinking through how does it um, how does it move to a, a model that enables addressable uh, buying and selling. The the reality, as I think we all know, is it's still a very nascent topic, and the the way we think about it is. The most important thing that, that we're trying to solve for with our clients is, is firstly enabling them to uh, unify the quality reach that they have across not just digital video or set-top box VOD inventory, but also the, ultimately their linear inventory. What, what we're being asked to solve for is enable me to, again, plan, forecast, add decision, uh, steward, optimize across a unified pool of inventory where the screen is simply an endpoint. An end um, once, once that is uh, that is achieved, then the kind of second layer uh, on, of the cake, I guess, is enabling the, 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 the sell side to be able to execute on that unified pool of quality inventory against any data set that they choose. So I, th I think there's a relationship between unifying the inventory um, in the first place, and then being able to um, sell that inventory against whether it be any addressable audience down to a kind of household set-top box level um, against brand marketers' proprietary data. But most importantly, do that across a single campaign that can run across digital set-top box and linear. Now, um, where is the industry in terms of being able to do that? Again, it's very early stages, but those are the proof points that need to get put on the board. Um, and I think that's going to be beneficial, uh, obviously not just for the, the sell side, but for the buy side, going back to our earlier conversation about brand safety, is then they can buy what is quality reach um, across screens um, against things that are, against executions that are beyond demo.